So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all of my data that I just generated and copy it. I'm going to come over here and fire up Notepad++. And like I said, Notepad++ is a free open source uh, text editor. It supports a lot of different languages, just great tools. It's one of my favorite pieces of software. So I'm going to go ahead and paste all of my statements into there, get back up to the top, and I'm going to tell it SQL is the language I'm working with. And you see it went ahead and applied some formatting to my text, makes it kind of easier to read and know what I'm looking at. Um, if I were working with this, I would want to go ahead and save it, you know, maybe to the desktop as a .sql file. I'm just going to call this temp1 because I, I really don't intend on saving this. And there's my temp1.sql file. And so what I have to do is I need to record a macro. And so basically I'm going to come down here to go which is the part I need to get rid of and I'm going to click this record button and I can also come up here to macro and click start recording and so what it's doing now is it's recording my keystrokes as I go through and do it so it can repeat those keystrokes so what I'm going to do is I'm holding down the shift key and while holding down the shift key I'm going to push the down arrow to go to the next line and then I'm going to push the end button and uh, what I've done is I've selected all the text I need to delete now you really have to be careful right here because if I were to just push the delete key a certain number of times and the fields which I were deleting were to change number of characters like say it were to go from processed 900 total records to processed 1000 total records and there was another character added to this message I would have a character left over after the certain number of deletes that it would have taken to delete this particular message so be aware of what your macro is doing and how the text can change in accordance with your macro. So in this case I went ahead and just uh, use shift down and then end and that's going to select everything all the way to the end of the next line. So that's an easy way to do it. I'm going to push the delete key to delete that, the delete again to get rid of that next line. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the down arrow and I'm going to scroll down to my next record. Now it's really important that I don't go past my record. I actually ran into this problem earlier. I scrolled down and I held the down arrow key and I actually went down past my record and then came back up to it and it created a problem on my macro and I'll explain why later. But uh, for now, we all we know is that we don't want to go past the next one. So I'm going to click stop to stop recording. I'm going to come up to macro and I'm going to say save current recorded macro. I'm going to give it a name. I think I already have a temp, so I'm going to call this temp2. And my key combination for this macro will be control shift uh, A. So that may already be one. Let's make it something that I know it's not going to be. Control shift um, T. We don't use T for anything. So, I'm right here at line 203, 204, and I have my go print processed X number of records statement. I'm going to hold down control shift and push T, and notice I, it's put me down to line 304, 305, and my go statement that used to be at line 203, 204 is gone. And so now I have my macro recorded. I can just sit here and do control shift T, 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 all the way to the end of a file. Or if I've got a massive file, you know, say it's 20,000 records long, I don't feel like sitting here and pressing a key 200 times. So I'm going to come up here to macro and I'm going to say run a macro multiple times. Now I can, this is the current recorded macro, but I've also named it temp2. So I'm going to choose temp2 and I say run it to the end of the file and click run. And so we see that it went ahead and went zoom and ran that macro a huge number of times and all of my go statements are now removed from my file. So if you do the macro right, you got nothing to worry about, just make sure you know you're using the correct number of keystrokes. And uh the thing I mentioned earlier when I was actually going down past it and then coming back up to it what you have to think about is if you're going to run this macro multiple times, like say to the end of a page, it's going to have different behaviors when it reaches the end of a page. So say 
my last go statement was here and it comes down 120 lines instead of the 100 it needs to and then goes back up 15 to where it was well if I'm here I can't go down 120 lines I'm gonna come down to right here and then go back up to 15 and delete the next two lines and then I'm gonna come down 100 more and then come back up 15 and delete the next two lines and what that's going to amount to is I'm eventually going to delete my entire file and I'll have nothing left if I run the macro all the way to the end of the file. So you got to be careful, you got to make sure your macro is not going to harm your file and you're not going to get some weird behaviors when we get to the end of the file. So just be aware of those things. And uh, one last thing I want to do is I need to have a semicolon at the end of each line you know you could go through and manually add one but hey we just learned how to use that handy macro tool so I actually already have one called add semicolon to the end of the line and I'm gonna go ahead and run that until the end of the file and let that go and as you can see it went ahead and added a semicolon to the end of every single line now you need to make sure you do that because we're going to put these files directly into Oracle and since we're doing that you don't want Oracle to treat this as one big statement it would just be one big ginormous syntax error you want each state insert statement to be executed one by one because we want that we have to tell Oracle to treat each of these as a different statement thus the semicolon at the end of the line 